Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on rules and filters in the Kubro Packet Master series of Network Packet Brokers. In previous videos we have taken a look at creating just basic flows in one port, out another port, things like that, as well as doing some filters on layer 2 criteria like VLANs and MAC addresses. In this video we're going to start filtering on some layer 3 protocols using the web GUI interface. What I have on screen in front of you right now is the probably now familiar VLAN packet capture that I've been using since the VLAN video to demonstrate some of these filters. I'm going to continue to use this in this video as well, and from this packet capture I've selected two IP addresses as well as two port numbers to build these examples around. And we can actually see those on screen in this PCAP in front of us. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the web GUI of our packet master. For this video I'll be using an EX32, and the reason for that is I want to point out a slight difference between the Generation 4 devices like the EX32 and the pre-G4 devices like the EX2. Let's go into our add rule page. I'll be sending the traffic into the device on port 1 and collecting it with Wireshark on port 4, like in our previous examples. And if we look right below the Mac source and Mac destination fields, we'll see this protocol drop-down menu. Currently it's set to any, which is simply to say that we're not filtering on any specific layer 3 protocol information at the moment. If we expand this menu, we'll see that we have some options in here. We have IP, IP slash TCP, IP slash UDP, IP slash SCTP, IP slash ICMP, ARP, MPLS, and Custom. Now this MPLS is the one that I wanted to point out as the difference. Granular MPLS filtering is only available on the G4 devices, being the EX32, 32+, EX484.3, EX4400, and EX20400. If I go into my EX2, and this will be true for the EX5, to EX6, and EX12 as well, and I expand this protocol menu, we'll see that I don't have an option for MPLS. Now I'll be covering how MPLS is handled in both the pre-G4 and G4 devices in separate videos. I just wanted to point this difference out um, at this moment in this video. So let's go ahead and select our first option in our, IP, in our protocol drop-down menu, which is IP, and we'll see that this gives us a couple more fields that we can use for some filtering criteria. We have IP source, IP destination, and protocol number. Now, while the IP fields might seem pretty self-explanatory, let's just go ahead and take a closer look at those so that we can go through what we can and cannot put in there. So, of course, we can put an IP address in there. And we can also add, as this note suggests, we can put in a subnet mask or CIDR notation along with our IP address. So we could do a forward slash and then something like a 255.255.255.0. This would be valid input. We could also replace the subnet mask with its CIDR equivalent. So we could do a forward slash 24. And of course, any subnet mask, any CIDR notation is fair game for these filters. I'll also point out here that while everything that we're doing at this point revolves around IPv4 addressing. You can do IPv6 addressing uh, or address filters as well. I'm going to cover that in yet another video because IPv6 address uh, filtering requires some different settings on the device, which has an effect on our number of filters and some other things that are worth talking about. But just know that even though I'm using IPv4 for all of my examples, IPv6 can be filtered as well. So let's go ahead and take that CIDR notation out of there and let's just look at this IP address. Let's create a filter filtering on this source IP address, and if we go back to our rule table, we'll see that this lays out pretty clearly that we're bringing our traffic in port 1, we're filtering on the IP protocol, we're filtering out everything with a source IP address of 131.151.32.21, and we're outputting that traffic on port 4. So let me go ahead and start our capture and play the PCAP, and we'll see that not terribly surprisingly, all of the traffic that we're getting is that which has the source IP address that we specified. So we go ahead and get rid of this filter. And we can also do this, of course, with a destination IP address. So if we just swap that IP into our destination and apply that rule, we'll see on the rule table again, lays this out pretty simply for us, shows us that we are filtering on a destination IP and outputting that traffic on port 4, and let's start that capture again. And again, we can see that everything that we're getting from this filter is only traffic that has the destination IP we specified. Now, of course, you can filter on an IP pair as well. So selecting IP, 
put in my port numbers here. We can go ahead and filter on a IP pair so that all traffic coming from this dot 21 and going to this dot 129 will be filtered out. And again, we can see both of our IPs in the rule table. We'll just throw this packet capture through the device one more time. And again, nothing groundbreaking here, nothing shocking. All of our traffic is that which is coming through this 20 or coming from 21 and going to 129, except for these DHP, DHCP discoveries that are sneaking in from my network adapter. Okay, now we saw that we just felt we just got one way traffic going from 21 to 129. Much like we saw in the MAC address video, we can actually filter out an entire conversation between two hosts. And this would require two rules. So select IP. We'll need two filters for this one. So the first would be all traffic from the dot 21 to the dot 129, like we just saw. Apply that rule. And then to get the other side of that, we're just going to swap these values. So we'll get all traffic going from the dot 129 to the dot 21 and apply that rule. So together, this pair of rules will give us all of the conversations between these two hosts on the network. And again, we might as well just do the PCAP one more time and see that. And here you can see all of the traffic that's going in between these two hosts. All right, now let's look at that protocol number real quick. So this allows us in IPv4 to search for, or to filter on a specific protocol number. It allows us to filter on a header type in IPv6, and it can also be an opcode if we're filtering in the ARP protocol. So how this works is uh, I'll just bring up Wikipedia's handy dandy list of IP protocol numbers. So say that we wanted to filter on the Xerox PUP protocol. Well, that's protocol number 12. So we just put number 12 in that field. And we can apply that rule. And the rule table shows us that we're filtering on protocol number 12. Now it doesn't tell us exactly what that is. So unless you have the list of IP protocol numbers memorized really well, a reference like this list is pretty useful. Um, we can also do this filtering on this protocol number between, from, or to any given IP or IP pair. So you can combine this protocol number with our IP addresses to create a more granular filter. And we can also do something like uh, just another example in here for IPv6. Protocol number 58, this is ICMP over IPv6, so if you want to filter that out, you just put protocol number 58 in that field and create your filter. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these other options in here, like IP slash TCP. Well, we can see automatically that this gives us two more fields here. It actually takes the protocol number field away, but it gives us the ability to put in a source port and a destination port. So now we have the ability to filter on our IP addresses along with source and destination ports. Now we can do this in any combination. You can, of course, filter just a, well, let's skip those examples for a while. Let's say we just want to filter out all traffic that has a destination port of 80. So regardless of IP address, regardless of where it's coming from or going to, anything with a destination port of 80 can be filtered out with a filter constructed in this way. You could also say, you know, only stuff coming from a specific host destined to port 80. Or only traffic that is going to port 80 on a given host. And of course, you could filter out the port 80 traffic between an IP pair as well. You could say only traffic that is originating from port um, 21, something like that. You could say all traffic coming from port 6000 to port 443. You know, anything, any combination of these fields creates your valid filters. It's just all what you're looking for. So we can also see that we have an option to add a mask to our ports. Our source port and our destination port both support this mask value. So what is this? 
Well, if you recall back to our VLAN episode, I believe in the CLI, we discussed the idea of doing a mask on our VLAN tags, and this would effectively allow us to provide a, a VLAN tag as, as a hex value, and then we would create a mask for it, and this would have the result of effectively filtering on multiple VLAN tags at one time. This is very similar. So let's take a look at how this works. What we're doing is we're creating a bitwise mask on our port value, and then we need to convert this to a hex value ultimately to give it to our, uh, to provide it in our field here. But in our bitwise mask, anywhere where we have a zero is going to wildcard the corresponding bit in our port value, and anywhere where we have a one is going to be a strict match on the corresponding bit in our port value. So for example, let's take port 1000. First thing we need to do is we need to write that out in binary, which gives us this value here. And then we can create a bitwise mask around this. So for example, I've created this mask. And what this is saying is we have a one here. So this corresponding bit is a strict match. This value can only be the one. Likewise with these next seven values in a row. However, in the mask, we're wildcarding these last three values, which in our binary representation of 1000 are zeros right now. But by wildcarding them, we are saying that any one of these or any combination of all of these can be either a one or a zero. So if this were a one, this would represent the number 1004. If this were a one, it would represent 1002. If these were both ones, it would represent 1006. So effectively, in combination with this mask, this returns all the values 1000 through 1007. So here's our binary representation of the port with its mask. We convert this to hex, and then this is the value that we drop into our field here creating a rule that is saying I want to filter on TCP destination ports 1000 through 1007 all through this one value in this mask. Okay, well, what's the practical benefit of this? We can see here that, yeah, we get to filter on seven ports at a time rather than creating seven individual filters for 1000 through 1007, but this was a, quite a bit of work here to convert to binary, create our mask, then convert to hex, and figure all that stuff out to drop it in here. Well, let's take a more extreme example of this, one that I'm actually going to steal right from OpenVSwitch's documentation. And I'm going to do something that will represent a, or at least I hope represent, you know, a, a kind of a point here about this. So while these bitwise masks are complicated and not terribly user-friendly, imagine that we had a more extreme example of this and we actually wanted to filter on ports 1000 through 1999 inclusive. So to do that, well, the first part is we would have to actually create 1000 individual filters for each given port, which is quite a bit of work in all honesty. So let's do that now without hopefully all of the work. So what I just did here, uh, if you want to know more about what I just did and how I did it, wait for our episode on REST APIs. But this is generating every single one of those rules that is going to filter through 1000 through 1999. And let's see up here in this value, we take notice to our TCAM value. We have a finite amount of TCAM on all of these. So the EX32, for example, supports 4,500 filters in IPv4 mode. 4,500 filters is a lot of filters but 1,000 ports is 1,000 filters. It's effectively using close to a quarter of all of our resources on this device. And as we see it continue to create these, I mean, this even takes a bit of time when it's automated, much less doing this all by hand, right? And it was, as we see this TCAM value uh, shoot up there, we are, you know, in effect, we're noticing that we're taking up a ton of resources on this device. Well, how do the bitwise masks help us with this? The way the bitwise masks help us with this is that Creating this mask is only one flow. Despite the fact that it represents seven ports in this instance, this is only one flow, therefore only uses one flow's worth of TCAM. So I'm really gonna cross the streams here by jumping into the CLI. This is something that we haven't uh, done before is mix the GUI and the CLI. But if you recall back to one of our early episodes, if we had the um, CC add flows command, which allowed us to throw a text file at the device and have it add rules automatically in that fashion. Well, I've created a text file with seven flows, each one of these flows showing a bitwise mask. And actually, these seven flows combined with these bitwise masks represent all ports between 1000 and 1999. And I just threw in a uh, source IP address for the heck of it. 
So I think at this point we can say, yeah, we get the point about this. Ah, look, this is actually finished. So you can see just these filters for these 1000 ports. Again, it's used up nearly a quarter of our resources on this device. So let's go ahead and delete all of those and let's take a look at the bitwise masks by comparison. I'm gonna delete these rules. and jump back into the CLI to apply our seven bitwise masks. And we should see that pop up here in just a moment. And there we go. Our rule table reflects one entry. It has our seven bitwise masks in it. This covers all ports from 1000 through 1999, 1000 flows effectively, but we're only using seven TCAM flows as opposed to 1,000 previously. And perhaps a lot less work. I'm not going to claim that it's a lot less work. I just copy pasted this right out of some documentation I found online, but hopefully this goes to show the value of those, those masks. Okay, we are running long in this video, so I think we're going to actually have to split this video up, but let's just uh, show one more thing. So we talked about IP, TCP, but when we're talking about UDP and SCTP, we actually have the same fields. The filters work the same way. There's really nothing new here. We just changed the protocol. All of the options are the same. So let's come back in another video and let's finish this up by talking about ICMP, ARP, and our custom batch. Again, MPLS will be safe for another day. So until then, take care everyone and thanks for watching.